when you begin to do more elaborated, sophisticated, sophisticated uh, provisioning operation, it is quite common that you will find a collision between two policies that are going to state different things for the same attributes. We're going to show how iTeam allows you to manage those gracefully without a single line of code. Let me explain in a little bit more detail what is it that we want to do. We're going to create two roles. We are experts on doing that right now. We're going to call the first role, role 1. And uh, we're going to call it BOOAD value 1, just to make it more uh, specific. And we're going to enable access. It's going to be a, a static uh, role. And that's what we need to do. We're going to create another role, role 2. BOAD value 2. Okay, enable access as before finish. So we have those uh, those two roles. Let's take a look at them here. Role 1 and Role 2, they, they don't have anything really assigned right now. Uh, just enable access and a name. Pretty good. Now we're going to create two provisioning policies. Go ahead and manage provisioning policies we've done many times before. We're going to create this provision in policy and we're going to call it, uh, let's also call it role 1, value 1. Members, as you may guess, it's going to be members of the role 1. Okay, And the entitlements we're going to say, well, it's going to be an automatic access to a specific service, which is, as we've done many times before, BOAD. That's the one we want. But we want within AD, we want to create a parameter and we're going to use uh, the description field here in AD. We're going to click continue and we're going to say that for that description value what we want to put is a mandatory field called value 1. Okay. Continue submit immediately we're done now we're going to create another provisioning policy as you may guess very similar to the other one I'm going to call this one role 2 value 2 and again members of the role 2 this time going to search for the roles, not to see them all. Role 2, that's the one we want. And the entitlement is going to be not only an AD, a BOAD account, but also we want to go into the guts of AD and specify that the description parameter, which is here is going to have a mandatory value of value 2. We submit that immediately and uh, we can see that both uh, provisioning policies uh, are successful. Uh, we add those two everything is ready. Now what we have is two provisioning policies with two roles that are going to go into the same attribute within AD and they say I want it to be value 1. Oh, I want it to be value 2. You know, So let's see what happened when we uh, start exercising this. So we're going to log in here from this nice looking self-help 
dashboard as J Benson. We can see what accounts Jeff Benson, Jeff Benson has. He says that this one, and we can show actually if we want to go to AD, we've never seen any, any Benson guy there. Oh, here it is AD. There's no Benson in there. Now, Mr. Benson is going to request access to row one. I put here to see them all. Roll one. View AD value one. Request access. View the request. It's in process. We refresh. Should be more than done by by then. And of course, if, as we expected, if we refresh this screen here, action refresh, we see that is a Benson here with value one. Actually, we can click here and see in more detail. The description field is is set to value one. Pretty good. Now, what happened is Mr. Benson now requests access to role two. And again, we're not putting any workflow for approvals in here, just to make the, the, the case more uh, dynamic, faster. Role. He's now requests access to role two. The request it's, it's uh, in process. When we refresh, it will be done. And what is it that happened here? If we refresh also on AD, we're going to see what is it that you expect uh, to actually see here. Action refresh value two. So you, you have a conflict here, and you know, and, and actually it could have been value one, it could be in value two, depends on what you have first, what you have later. If you know it's a conflict because the two things are pointing into the same place and you know intending uh, you to have uh, different roles. So what we have in item is a wonderful feature that reflects the maturity of of the tool, which, which is with no coding, if we go to provisioning policies, we can actually go ahead and say, for example, let's look at the row one provisioning policy, and remember this priority that we haven't used in here? This one actually specifies the, the highest priority. Both are running at the highest uh, priority, which is one. If we were to, for example, make the priority of, let's make the priority of roll two, make it smaller. I'm gonna make this priority two. I know you have a range of digits to play with this. We're gonna change the priority of this uh, uh, provisioning policy. So by having done that, if I just go in here and refresh the account, remember the value 2 has a lower priority than value 1. So if we were to refresh, action, where is refresh here, we see that he got not back now value 1 because now the conflict has been managed by the priority of the access. Now, let me show you another thing. This is a short video. Anyway, we have time to show you one more thing, which is we can give managers, like Eddie Power, who is uh, Jeff Benson's uh, manager, we can give uh, Eric, uh, Eric Powers, actually we did, we gave him a, a, manage, uh, a manager's view of item, actually. I'm just I'm trying to run it again. I need to log off first. If I log in from the item console, E powers actually. Same user ID I use from the self help GUI. Notice that he doesn't have a full cockpit as you know, there's no provision in here, there's no many of the things, configure system security, all those things that we have in here, they're not. He has a very reduced cockpit that allows him to play with the users 
and the roles of the people that report unto him. Very nice, very, very uh, convenient. So he can actually go, for example, into roles and look for Benson for uh, role. Let's look for role uh, one. And we have role one, and actually we can see who has role one. Who has the highest priority? Remember that that one we left it at one, and we reduced the value to to two. We can see who has that, and Mr. Benson has that. Pretty good. If we, what happened if we remove now, Mr. Benson for that group? Make it effective immediately. Managers can do this. But now, because he lost that membership to that role, the other one who had a lower priority, but now he can play because uh, the other one doesn't exist. Bang! He gets set to value two. So you see the maturity of item once more into the fact that you can do these sophisticated actions and again, not a single line of coding.